every day there's like a new crime against humanity coming out of Israel. What can you tell us about what's the latest in that area? And then we can also just talk about the Iron Dome. You know, I'm glad you said that, that there's a new crime every day. It becomes kind of exhausting to keep up with. And I've been keeping up with it for, oh, well, well over 10 years, like 12 years, I don't know, 13 years, 13 years. I think it was like 2008, 2009, when I started focusing on Israel, Palestine, and it's really exhausting. And you don't see a whole lot of change on the ground, but I followed the development of the iron dome system over the years. And it's sort of a decisive component of Israel's strategic deterrence because it is meant to take down homemade rockets and Katusha rockets potentially fired by Hezbollah from Lebanon and more advanced missiles. It's basically intended to provide Israel with complete insulation from its environment so that it can, it can carry out whatever crimes it wants. It can continue this occupation and the siege of Gaza indefinitely without consequence. One of the few really, I wouldn't call it a tectonic shift, but significant shifts that we saw militarily since 2006, when Hezbollah dealt Israel a bloody nose before the Iron Dome system, was the confrontation between Israel and the armed factions in the Gaza Strip earlier this year. And what we saw was an enormous development of the domestically produced rockets from the Gaza Strip and the ability to deploy them in a way that kind of tricked the Iron Dome. If you look at the footage, of some of the rocket salvos, which reached Tel Aviv un- in unprecedented fashion. I mean, before they were only able to reach this little uh, border city or town called Sterot, which was right outside the Gaza Strip. And there, the, the range of these rockets has been increasing steadily despite all of the punishing Israeli assaults on the Gaza Strip. They can't suppress the development of these rockets. This time they were reaching Tel Aviv in large numbers And they were kind of like set pieces where the rockets would explode in bouquets and the Iron Dome system would get confused. It wouldn't know which rocket to go after. And there simply weren't enough Iron Dome missiles. And so some of the rockets would actually hit home and they would, they don't, they don't have the most advanced targeting, but they would hit parts of Tel Aviv. They would hit uh, a gas pipeline in Ashkelon, which is a southern Israeli city, uh, they were reaching all the way to the north of Israel, getting close to Haifa. And so this was a failure of the key component of Israel's strategic deterrence, the Iron Dome. And the U.S. taxpayers invested so much into that component. The Iron Dome was developed with funding from the U.S. taxpayer. The U.S. taxpayer paid 50% uh, of the um, of the R and D costs for the Iron Dome system, which was produced by Rafael, an Israeli arms company, so we were basically paying arms merchants in Israel, and the Iron Dome gave Israel the confidence to start launching these punishing assaults on the Gaza Strip without any consequence. But now they have, actually have to think twice. The Iron Dome, it's not a defensive system; it is a system designed to give Israel unlimited offensive capacity without the fear of any consequence. We know in any military conflict, when both sides have equal deterrent capacity, they tend to stand down or resort to diplomacy uh, more quickly. And so when Israel gains such an outsized advantage, it slaughters entire families in the Gaza Strip. It killed 551 women and children in the 2014 assault on the Gaza Strip. Uh, I mean, families were being targeted in in multifamily homes just to get one so-called Hamas operative. And that really is thanks to the Iron Dome system.